Hello, welcome back to another video tutorial here at Geek and Play Studios. My name is Gary Miller. I'm going to do a Photoshop tutorial here on creating volumetric st streaming light rays. This is a render that finished up this morning that is straight out of view. I haven't done anything to it yet. And I had spent a lot of time in view working on the lighting and it never I never got it quite how I wanted. Uh, probably because I didn't spend enough time on it and quite frankly I just got tired and I knew with what the image lacked, uh, I knew I could make the adjustments in Photoshop a lot faster than I could in view. So I, I, I gave up working on the atmosphere in view and, and knew I would uh, be able to finish up here in, in uh, Photoshop. The areas in particular that I knew needed um, some reworking was the background. There's just um, not enough contrast. and since this tree here right down the middle and the foreground are really what I want to capture and be the main focal point I need to add more contrast in the background so that it's not stealing uh, it's not stealing the show and drawing your attention away from right here so I did I did some post work and darkened it up and brightened up uh, the area of the sky here and here and uh, all the other areas where the sky is poking through. So this is the final image here in Photoshop. This was uh, the before and this was the after. And I'm very pleased with the results that I've got. It would be take me, I'd still be working on the lighting if I were trying to achieve this identical effect in view. So today's tutorial is about the streaming light rays that are coming down here, which I did all in Photoshop, because to do something like this in view, you've got to uh, spend a lot of time adjusting the camera just right and putting plants, trees, whatever, in the way of the source of your volumetric light so that you can get the light rays trickling through them to create this sort of effect and I figure I would just do it quicker here in Photoshop rather than have to do it in view. So that's what we're gonna create these light rays and now most of this area here to the right of the viewing area I have off the off the screen simply because it gives me more real estate here to be able to view the image but all we're going to be doing is creating a couple layers which you do right down here on this icon and clicking on this icon we'll be adding uh, some layer masks and that's all we're going to be doing it's nothing that I haven't covered in many of my other tutorials so to begin with I want to create a new layer and with my foreground and background color set to the default come up here to filter render clouds and filter render different clouds and I'm going to run through the filter several times by hitting control F until I come across something that looks like this that's kind of I don't know like a plasma type of look and because I have a high um, a large image size here it gives me more of a complex effect in this cloud. Uh, it's essentially it's more than I want. So I'm going to hold down shift and alt and I'm just going to scale this up some because I don't need all of that black and white information in here. And I'll come use my crop tool, crop off what I don't need. And let's set the blending mode to overlay. Let me zoom in here. Actually overlay is not going to work. I'm going to come to color dodge. Uh, color dodge is what I like. It adds sort of uh, the effect of early morning steam rising up off the off the forest floor. Say maybe it rained last night or something. Now, granted, the effect is a little too uh, too much. There's too many blown out areas, too much white and too much brilliance. But we're going to tame that beast here real quick. On this layer, I'm going to 
click on Add Layer Mask, use my paintbrush, and for the paintbrush, I'm just going to choose a hard edge brush, come down here to Tip, dyna tip Shape, and I'm going to bring the hardness down to about 60, and I don't want ship tape Shape Dynamics enabled. Let me adjust my brush size here. And I'm going to change this to normal, opacity, let's bring that down. First thing I want to do is get rid of the effect here on this, on this foreground tree. I can probably bring the opacity up, paint that out much quicker. And I'm just painting with black over my layer mask, which makes the effect of our cloud filter invisible. I'm not erasing anything. And it's totally undoable. If I want, I can change it back to white and paint that effect right back on it. But I wanted to remove it, so I'll bring this down 50, 60 percent uh, opacity. It just means I'll have to go over it more times. Okay, let's lower it down a little bit more to about 30. This area of extreme illumination I like, but it's a little bit too much. A little bit too much. Just slightly undoing the effect of the filter. Okay, I'm going to lower the opacity of the entire filter down to, well, it looks to be about 63%. I want to eliminate a little bit more here, a little bit more there. I don't want any on, this, on, this, on these trees here, so I will just cover those up. There we are. And let me get rid of the effect here on this tree. Okay, let's turn that layer off, turn it back on. Very quickly, we were able to uh, create some uh, volumetric light right in here. And I like that effect. Now let's work on our streaming rays. So, come on. So I'm going to come over here, create a new layer, and I'm going to change my foreground color to white. And with that same brush, I'm going to come over here and choose Multiply, and the opacity down to about 50%. Come back up here to my brushes. I'm going to enable Shape Dynamics, and I want the size jitter down to here. Pin pressure, and that's it. Now, if you're not using a Wacom tablet, it doesn't matter. You'll just need to adjust the opacity up here a little bit more frequently than I will. But you can achieve the same effect with a mouse. And now what I want to do is just create some areas here of light. Now because the, the painting mode is set to multiply, areas that I paint over uh, several times become brighter. And that's really what I want because as light streams through, say, a heavy forest or jungle canopy of trees and, and stuff, um, not all the light rays that reach the ground will be of the same intensity as they have to filter, as the light has to filter through various different materials of various transparencies. Actually, I'm going to undo that. Um, not all the light in a light ray will reach the ground. So I want to have these variable areas of, of brightness. So that's what the uh, multiply does. Okay, that looks just like a, a big mess. So come up here to filter and come in over here to blur and motion blur. Now I've got it the angle at 66% or whatever angle that you want.
63, that'll work. And I have the distance checked all the way up to maximum, and that's fine. Click OK. Now I'm going to come up here to Filter, and I'm going to run that uh, motion blur filter one more time. Let me back out a little bit. You come over here to my Move tool, and I'm going to stretch this out a little bit. There we are, and Crop Tool, trim off the excess. I want to zoom in here. Okay, first thing I want to do is pop a layer mask onto that. Come up here to Filter, Render, and Clouds. And you see the immediate effect. I'll hold down, let me move this in. I'll hold down the Shift key to disable the cloud layer on my layer mask that I just made. That's before and that's after. It softens it up a little bit. Now all I want to do is Control T to bring up my free transform tool, right click, come down here to warp. And what I want to do is I want to stretch these out a little bit more, bring them in. I want the point of origination of these lights to be more focused here on a single point rather than, you know, starting from here, casting down. I want them to be a little bit more uh, focused, I guess the word that I want to use is. And being careful not to bend them, that wouldn't look very realistic. And this looks to be bent. Um, can I zoom in with Z? There we are. I want to grab these handles and try to straighten this mess out. There we are. That looks a little straighter. Okay, let's zoom out now and see what we've achieved. A little bit too bright for my taste. So I'll bring the opacity of it down a little bit. And there we've got some streaming light rays. It's a little bit too sharp. So on my layer mask right here that we ran the filter on, I'm going to come up here to Filters, Blur, and add a little Gaussian Blur to that. So you just back this off. See what it looks like jacked all the way up. Now I'll come down here to about that. Okay, and on my layer mask, I'm going to hold down Control and hit L to bring up my levels. And I will bring my shadow slider up. As you see, as I start bringing it up, it starts disappearing. So let's bring it up. There we are. Now we've got our light rays just streaming in through the trees. Hit OK. Bring the intensity down. No, you know what? I'm going to leave the intensity up because I'm going to come down here and add an adjustment layer to that. And I want hue and saturation. And I want to colorize that. I'm going to click on this icon here so it affects only that layer and not all the layers underneath. I'm going to bring the lightness up, the saturation up. And now I'm just going to find a color in my hue here. Actually, I'll bring my lightness down. Find a, a color here that's somewhat yellow. Maybe a little orangey. That looks interesting. OK, now I will bring the lightness up and the saturation down. Now, the reason why I had the saturation up and the lightness down is so that I could find a color that I wanted. Once I arrived at that, now I can make the adjustments so that's a little bit more realistic. 
That's too orangey red. Right about there. Okay, let's close that out. Okay, so this is the before both of those layers. That's with that kind of steamy volumetric light layer effect. Streaming light rays, and then this is with the hue and saturation. So this was a pretty effective and very quick way of not only creating volumetric light rays, but having more flexibility and control over how they appear, and r rather than have to kind of accept what you're stuck with when you create them in view. And either way, you can achieve almost or identical effects, and it's a whole lot quicker, uh, especially when rendering. So that's it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching here at Geek and Play Studios. My name's Gary Miller. Have a good day.